What's happening guys? Keith here with another Impact Wrestling Review. So tonight we are going to take a look at the July 26th edition of Impact. However, before I get into that, I just want to give a huge shout out to everybody that came, stopped by the page, and checked out my Slammiversary review. Fantastic, thank you guys very much. Most viewed video, most watched video on my entire channel, so thank you guys very much for that. I do appreciate that. Um, and just... All, overall, the positive responses to Slammiversary, I saw a lot of podcasters that normally don't cover Impact have having fantastic things to say about the show, um, and they were planning on tuning into the show, so hopefully the ratings reflect all the new viewers. I mean, they kind of needed to hit this episode out of the park. I did see some mixed reviews online about what people thought of it, but as long as they watched it, that's really what matters. Um, I thought it was a solid show, though. I, I thought... The matches were very good. We got to see the debut of Scarlett Bordeaux. And they were able to showcase a lot of the talent that wasn't on Slammiversary. So people got to see how deep their roster really is. So before we open the show, we got to see a recap of Slammiversary. Nice to see actual matches or actual video clips rather than still pictures that other companies uh, do. Uh, but we actually opened the show with Austin Aries. He came out and had, I guess it was the champion's address... Um, but he comes out and says Impact Wrestling really delivered, and many people are saying that it was the best pay-per-view of the year, uh, quite possibly the best in the company's history. Um, he says he did exactly what he said he was going to do. He says that nobody, there is nobody better in the industry than him. And then he kind of starts shooting on WWE, saying people are handed lines inside the bubble, in a, your own comfort zone, you can't call yourself the best. And he starts to put himself over. And he kind of sends out an open invitation, kind of what I was hoping he would do. Uh, at this point, we see Eddie Edwards come out. I think he came out from the crowd. Kendo stick in hand, waits for Aries to turn around, nails him in the stomach, knocks Aries to the ground, grabs the championship belt, holds it up. So I, I thought it was a good way to open the show. Um, obviously, we're going to get Aries versus Edwards in some sort of fashion. Very curious to see where they go with this Eddie Edwards character because... Obviously, I don't think he made a quite a face turn, so to speak, when he was handed the torch. He uh, still looked like the lunatic after he laid Ares out. Um, but that was all we saw from an, any interaction between the two of them. Ares did pop up a little later on in the show. And then we head over to the commentary desk, and Josh and Don talked, I think, about the rest of the show. But this was good to see that they actually, I believe they actually recorded from ringside, Normally, they do a voiceover for most things because at Windsor tapings, we didn't see the commentary desk at all. And normally in Orlando, they would have the commentary desk next to the entrance ramp. And when the, when the wrestlers came out, we would never see the commentary desk there. So that was a good feature to have. And we got our first match of the night, and it was Petey Williams versus Taiji Ishimori. Um, we had a whole bunch of Bullet Club talk by uh, Josh and Don throughout the match. Uh, I think it was Wednesday when Taiji posted on Twitter saying, Impact Wrestling is a good company. Thank you for everything. And then Callis thanked New Japan on Twitter as well for sending Taiji to them. So I don't know if maybe this is the start of some sort of relationship or maybe just Don trying to get the ball rolling. But this was a really good match to open the show. Um... Very, very even. Both guys, very st similar stature. Uh, a lot of back and forth, bunch of counters. Crowd was pretty into the match. Um, we had a handful of near falls. We got a good ending sequence with Ishimori getting the victory with an implant code breaker. I saw the move called a bunch of different things, but this is what I saw on PW Insider, so that's what I grabbed. Um, then the two men shake hands. Uh, and all of a sudden, they are attacked by the Desi Hit Squad. From behind, they come out. Gama Singh is calling the shots. Lay both men out in the ring. Um, this was this was a good statement by the Desi Hit Squad. Uh, they took the perfect opportunity to lay two guys out that were smaller than them, so they were able to look and stand tall. Um, definitely good to see them trying to do something with the Hit Squad. I would assume maybe next week we'll get a tag match here or something like that. But hopefully we get the other members of the Hit Squad to uh, join the Impact roster because I think they will need size in numbers. 
Uh, so we go backstage, and Alicia is interviewing Anthony Corelli. We were told earlier in the evening that he was going to be here tonight. Uh, she asks him if he misses wrestling. He says he does, but he, unfortunately he is not medically cleared. Uh, he says he's here tonight with one of his students. At this point, Austin Aries walks up, obviously angry with what happened between him and Eddie Edwards, and he interrupts him and tells Corelli to leave. Uh, Corelli tells Aries that he was a big fan of his, but after you know this, he isn't. Aries challenges him to a match. Corelli tells him he's not cleared. However, at this point, Aries challenges the student, and the student accepts, obviously without thinking. Corelli's like, uh, he, he's he's new. He's just starting out. And uh, at the, this point, Corelli was like, well, at least he paid for his tuition in advance. So apparently this match is going to take place next week. Uh, there was some sort of Twitter exchange between Aries and Corelli, which signified that it will happen next week. They might have said it on the broadcast, but I did miss that. Um, up next, we have Rebel versus Tessa Blanchard. Uh, this match was good for what it was. I mean, it was short, but they they didn't stop. They were just going. Uh, Rebel started out really hot. She quickly got derailed. Uh, Tessa was getting a bunch of offense in. She went for a hammerlock DDT. Uh, Rebel countered it and tried to roll her up. Rebel started getting a bunch of offense in. She went up top, started showboating. Tessa took advantage, knocked her down, hit her with a draping DDT, and then put her away with the hammerlock DDT. This match only lasted, like I said, a couple of minutes, but it was good. Good showing for both women. Uh, Rebel has definitely improved in her recent matches. And then we get the debut of Scarlett Bordeaux. Um, she is interviewed by Alicia. They in do the interview kind of on the entrance ramp, which was cool. I liked just the way... The background was with the stage, and then you saw the crowd there. So it was a cool feel. Um, but Alicia asks her how it feels to finally be an impact, and uh, Scarlett says, we're in the middle of a revolution, and I want to be an inspiration for women. You know, I think uh, Alicia answered with, like, Susan B. Anthony, and she's like, no, like Marilyn Monroe or Cardi B. Uh, and then she goes on to say she won't be hot-shamed. She kind of flips a switch, and I guess Alicia was talking to her at this point, and she said, uh, no, 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 a 10 is talking. You're a 5. Go sit in the audience where you belong. Um, and then she says that she wants to make wrestling sexy again, and she is going to be the best women's activist. She is going to empower all women. Well, we kind of expected them to bring sex into the equation with the more mature themes of the show or the direction it's been going in. So, um... Some criticism here on Scarlet from a lot of people. Some people weren't happy with the way she was portrayed and things like that. But, I mean, she cut a great promo. She's gotten better in the ring. And let's be honest, Impact doesn't make their, the knockouts an afterthought. So it, it's not like quite uh, what other companies have done with the women in that aspect. But um, it should be interesting. There is not many face women on the roster outside right now of uh kiara hogan ally i mean rosemary's hurt uh madison rain there's rumors of her going into the may young classic so she might have been written off with the whole casket thing so i'm not sure it's going to be interesting i think they definitely need to bring a few more women in to fill out that division uh we go backstage and Matt Seidel cuts a promo. He basically says he gave everything he had, um, but he came up short. But tonight he is going to regain his title. Then we get a Pentagon promo. He says that Callahan took him to the limit at Slammiversary, but he came away with the ultimate prize. Our next match is Trevor Lee versus Johnny Impact. Great to see Johnny Impact back in the Impact Zone, as they call it. Uh, crowd was super behind Johnny. Uh, Johnny controlled a good portion of the match. Obviously, Caleb Conley was ringside, so he got himself involved, uh, grabbing Johnny's foot. So Trevor controlled for a while. Crowd was constantly cheering for Johnny when he was down. Johnny was able to start to mount some offense. Conley kept getting involved. Uh, we got a few near falls. Trevor ends up sliding to the outside. Him and uh, Caleb, I guess, kind of, kind of were huddling. Uh, Johnny goes up top, hits them both with the countdown to impact. Throws Trevor Lee into the ring. Hits Starship Pain for the win. So, good match back for Johnny and a good showing for Trevor Lee. Uh, I wish they would do more with Trevor Lee. I mean, I, he is a fantastic talent. Uh, 
but I'd just like to see more done with him. So after the match, Johnny grabs the microphone and he says it's great to be back in the impact zone. He says obviously his goal is to be impact champion, but he still has unfinished business. He says he had to take time off because of injuries he suffered at the hands of Congo Kong. He says he won't rest until he takes Kong to Slam Town. So it was really nice that Impact didn't forget about that whole thing and just move on. So now we have something for Kong to do and something for Johnny to do uh, upon his return. So good stuff there. Uh, we go backstage and Alicia is interviewing Allie and she asks her what is next for her. And Allie kind of says, you know, she wishes she could have been there for Madison when Soo Young put her in the coffin because she suffered the fate. Rosemary suffered the same thing. And then she goes on to say she will take Sue down even if she has to do it alone. At this point, Kiera walks up and says, you don't have to do this alone. And then Allie says, Sue, your time is up. So I guess we know where we're going here. Uh, then we get the GWN flashback. Um, it was nice that we didn't see it last week. Uh, very long. This was uh, Generation Me versus, I believe, the Motor City Machine Guns uh, with uh, Alex Shelley announcing that he was retiring earlier in the week, so I don't know if that was the reason why, but this this went on for a little while. Yeah. So we go backstage, and uh, Joe Hendry is there, and he is gifting Grado a Joe Hendry t-shirt. How fitting. Eli Drake walks up with a gift in hand, and he gives it to the three of them, because Katarina, Joe, and Grado were standing there. Grado opens it, and it is a picture of... Katarina and Joe Hendry together, and Grado is confused as why he wasn't in the picture. So I guess they're still continuing to go with the storyline, which I'm glad they did, and that's where I was hoping they would go, because I think we have a lot to uh, to see between Joe Hendry and Eli Drake, um, and then you throw Grado in there, and we'll see where it goes. So uh, KM and Fala Ba are backstage. KM tells Ba that we need to find his mean streak, and he tells him this as he's walking with him and kind of knocking stuff out of people's hands and just smacking people and just being a dick in general. And uh, I think we're going to figure that, find that out next week. And we get a Killer Cross video package. Um, I guess we hi head over to the OG's hideout. Uh, King and the OG's are there, and they have the defaced tag titles. Uh, the OG's definitely looked beat up with Hernandez. He had, like, tape on his head, and you can just see all the... The bruise is all on his body, but uh, King says that he expected more out of Conan and LAX. He figured Conan would have taught them better, uh, but they only won the battle when, even though they thought they won the war, which is what happened when they celebrated after the match, and then the OGs took their opportunity. So this was interesting. We get uh, Callahan and OVE with their hand cam shot. Uh, Callahan is staring into the mirror, and he is... Uh, saying that he looks stupid and he wonders why he let Pentagon do this to him. Uh, at this point, Jake and Dave walk up and then they say they have to take a piss. So they head over to the bathroom and he's standing in the urinal and some guy kind of looks over. Callahan thinks that he's staring at his shaved head. So Callahan turns his body to him while he is urinating on the guy, which we see. And then he kind of calls him out. The Chris brothers grab the guy and they shave his head in the bathroom. So... We are seeing Sammy Callahan unfold to an even crazier person. Uh, so what I really want to see with OVE is I think they should really expand them. Um, not quite like an NWO type thing, but maybe like a Raven's Flock type deal. Not sitting in the crowd and stuff like that. But, I mean, the OI4K, I guess, group is huge. You, you bring in some guys like uh, Zachary Wentz. Have Desmond Xavier turn heel. Just, you know, you can do whatever with him. Just say he wasn't getting his shot, so this is why he did it. Um, maybe sign Trey Miguel. A couple other good guys. Just just because I think we're going to see a championship run with Callahan in the future. And I think him having a whole bunch of people in front of him will, will do wonders for him. I, I would love to see that. Uh, let me know what you guys think they should do with OVE. Um, and that brings us to the main event of Brian Cage defending his newly won X Division Championship against Matt Seidel. This was another great match, great main event for the show. Um, these two guys work well together. Um, not much left to say. Uh, Seidel goes to work right out of the gate. They go back and forth. Seidel is countering or trying to counter a lot of uh, 
Cage's offense, action spills to the outside. I think Cage was on the ground. Seidel's on the apron. He runs at him, goes for the double knees. Cage catches him, throws him into the ring post. We go to commercial. We come back. They're fighting on the stage, I believe. Um, Seidel is able to hit, I think he hit a springboard or off the top rope, double knees onto Cage on the entrance ramp successfully this time. Uh, action goes back in the ring. Seidel controls for a bit until Brian Cage ends up hitting a Hurricane Rana. Two go back and forth, Seidel countering here and there. Uh, Seidel hits a beautiful snap, Hurricane Rana, for a near fall. Um, Cage goes on the offensive, hitting a F5, which Seidel's able to kick out of. But eventually, Cage puts Seidel away with the drill claw, and that is the end of the show. So I, I really think Impact needs to get some sponsors because it seems like all they do besides plugging stuff for themselves, is plugging stuff on Pop TV. Uh, being Pop TV's highest rated show or highest viewed show, you would think that Pop would be catering to them rather than them doing it for Pop. I don't know. I, I just, just, because we got a whole bunch of Swedish Dicks uh, references, and then I think they cut into the main event a little preview of the show, because I guess it was the second season was last night or something to that aspect but yeah i i mean they need to do something here just to make themselves bigger but that's pretty much all i have for you guys hope you enjoyed my review thanks for taking some time out of your day to check out my video i will see you guys sunday for another edition of the impact report and until then don't forget to like share and subscribe thanks guys bye